morning campers. <laughs> uh, we got an uh, interesting one today. Not really super interesting. Like there's not anything weird happening. It's just beautiful. <laughs> I just wanted to record here. Because I look at the just look at the, the fall colors on either side of the highway. I love it. It's the best time of year to be driving this particular stretch of highway. We are currently on Interstate 5 southbound. Uh, where the heck are we actually? In Elkhead Scotts Valley. Oh, I think that's I think that's two separate words. Elkhead or Scotts Valley, I think. And on my GPS, Elkhead Scotts is one word, which is I don't think correct. <laughs> Elkhead Scotts. That's a really insulting thing to call me. Maybe you shouldn't walk around with the elk on your head, Scott. Um, <laughs> it just sounds like a horrible nickname for somebody that became the, the name of this entire valley. <laughs> Has anyone ever told you the legend of Elkhead Scott? <laughs> I'm in a weird mood. I'm in a weird always in a weird mood. I'm a weird mooded person. <sighs> it is gorgeous up here. We're, this is roughly mile marker about 157? 157. I can read. <laughs> this is 158 on my GPS until we pass this green marker. Now it'll change. Now it'll change. No. Yeah, there it goes. <laughs> now my GPS is 157. Ah, we're heading south. We've got a delivery at 3 o'clock in the morning in Gilroy, California, which uh, if anyone's familiar with the geography of California, Gilroy is on uh, U.S. Highway 101 on the west side of the state, um, not too far from Salinas, California. Salinas? Is it Salinas, California, Salinas, Kansas? Yeah, no, Salina, Kansas, Salinas, California. It's California in Spanish. And in Kansas, it's redneck. That's <laughs> how it works. Yeah, Gilroy is just up the 101 from there. So in order to get to the 101, we're going to go south on I-5. And then as soon as possible, we're going to cut over to the 101 with the most direct freeway link, which is, uh, I believe, Interstate 580. side of the Bay Area. It doesn't actually go into the Bay Area, not until the, like the very southern part when it cuts over to the 101, but it does go past the Bay Area and experiences lots of lots of Bay Area bypass traffic. So the 580 is going to be pretty, uh, pretty busy, most likely. It also, because it's, you know, not in the town, it's on the, the, the like hilly bits where no one wanted to build houses. So, yay! <laughs> That'll be fun. That will be fun. Everyone loves the parts of California where nobody wanted to build houses a hundred years ago. <laughs> hundred and fifty years ago. That's why that yeah, that's right. Buffalo when California got settled. It was like the eighteen fifties, eighteen sixties. Just like right leading up to the Civil War and during it. various gold rushes. I know my American history. Roughly. <laughs> I can't tell you exact years, but I can give you like, you know, 150-ish years ago. 160-ish years ago, actually, because it's a different decade than the one that all, my, that all my references are based on. Like, when I learned those facts, it was 150 years ago. Now it's like 170 years ago. <laughs> 160, 170. Oh, I am 30. Oh, God. Um, <laughs> I'm having an existential crisis. <laughs> uh, have I mentioned lately that I love this job? Just look at this view. This is absolutely incredible. I'm literally just driving down a highway surrounded by some of the most beautiful scenery in the country just laughing my head off, <laughs> just talking about nothing. Oh man, 
I love this job. <laughs> job and I love the internet that gives me a reason to be saying these things out loud instead of just thinking them and making myself laugh. <laughs> so the, the one thing that I am a little bit concerned about is uh, the area around Gilroy kind of prone to forest fires, uh, well wild, wildfires. So uh, it's kind of a late wildfire season, that's an old prime trailer on the northbound side. Um, it is kind of wildfire season at the moment. Last I checked there weren't any around Gilroy so we're okay for today but I want to be real careful with where we end up sleeping tonight. I do not want to be sleeping in any of the areas that are prone to wildfires because those things blow up fast and they move quick and I do not want to be anywhere near any of them. I have, I have friends who live, well friends, I have Twitter people that I follow that live in the, uh, the hills around yards are currently covered in ash from the forest fires. It's just, it sounds like it's just apocalyptic. Like this, this, there's this thing that you have to pay, like in addition to the ridiculous cost of living in Southern California, once a year your yard becomes a hellscape. And it's like, why? Why do you live there? Move somewhere else. And it's like, well, they work in entertainment or uh, any tangential Hollywood industry. So they're kind of stuck there. And it's just like, this is terrible. <laughs> I, ugh. Stuff like that makes me glad I've been trucking and not, like, video game or entertainment vlogging. <laughs> <laughs> Friends. Uh, it's, there's, there, there's a meme going around where it's like one person's talking about something that their friend said, and then the person they're talking to says, now, were these actual friends or were these podcasts you listen to? And I'm, real, I'm like, oh, that's me. <laughs> But I am actually friends with some of the people that do the podcasts I listen to. So it's like, I'm allowed to say friends for some of them. <laughs> like, I consider Matt, Paul, and Jacob at the Ice Cream Social friends. I consider uh, the pod therapy guys to be friends. Even though I'm terrible with their names. <laughs> Jim and Nick. Which one's which? Uh, I could tell you if they were talking. <laughs> These are people that I have met and spent time with in real life. <laughs> so bizarre! Um, but yeah. Ugh. What is my life? What has my life become? <laughs> just driving. I'm just driving. I'm just driving and existing on the internet. Which are the two things that I'm good at. I feel like I'm good at driving. We, uh, we had to take the trailer to the shop again yesterday. I forgot to mention that. <laughs> Uh, so we del we did our pickup in Eugene, California. They destroyed our uh, hours of service clock. We had just enough time, uh, by which I mean about 40 minutes, left on our clock when we left the shipper in Eugene to get back to the truck stop in um, Coburg, just north of Eugene. The, the, the Eugene TA truck stop is in Coburg. Uh, and that has a lovely little shop, which I've been to before when I was back in training. Which the last time I went through that area, uh, my trainer and I stopped at the TA in Coburg for a uh, uh, tractor PM. So I knew that was a good shop because my trainer loved it. So I stopped there and they were able to remove uh, the backing up a little bit. Every utility trailer comes with a removable bar. And that bar goes through the holes in the track that you use to slide the axles forward and back. Now, the, the front of the slider mechanism for the tandems has a notch in it so that if you slide something through the holes, the tandems will stop at the thing you slid and line up the front pin of the, uh, they will line up the front pin of the tandems with the hole two notches behind it. So you're supposed to use the slider bar to put the axles exactly where you want them. What winds up happening with most prime trailers is that slider bar gets put in like the front spot just as a stop to keep, uh, to keep the axles from going all the way up so far that they hit the side skirts. But like a little bit further back from the side. Because like there's a, there's a stop that's welded in on either end of the slider track. How much merge do you guys have? None. Okay, let's move left. Uh, there is a stopper welded in on the slider track. You guys are all merging and then we're going up a, up a hill. And 
for some reason they didn't connect the verge to the climbing lane, which just seems ridiculous to me. Right. Middle lane, keep going buddy, don't see that truck, don't see that truck, don't slam the brakes, keep going. <laughs> Good job Apophis. Um, there's a stop on either end of the slider track, so you cannot slide the axles out of the track without extremely violent, uh, without extremely violent truck, uh, fucking to remove the, the slider from the, the slider track. Ooh, this guy's coming up fast on the butt. Glad we moved right. Hello, empty log hauler. Your trailers are very cool. Has anyone ever told you that? <laughs> it's, it's super cool that log trailers just, like, fold up like that, and it's basically like driving around bobtail. That's really neat. I think that's cool. Um, yeah, so there's stoppers, back to the topic, there are stoppers in the slider track, and those stoppers keep the axles from going too far forward or too far back. So the actual stop bar, the one that you can remove and move around, that's entirely unnecessary. Uh, it's mostly just an annoyance, and on prime trailers, tends to get them, like, super, they, they tend to get, like, ridiculously bent and broken by people sliding the, uh, people sliding the axles and not treating them very well. So that was the case with the trailer that we currently have. I'm still recording, right? Yeah. That was the case with the trailer we currently have. The stop bar had been bent severely out of shape and was stuck in the hole that it was left in. Unfortunately, instead of being in the farthest forward hole, like usual, a spot where it's not particularly in the way, uh, it was in the fifth hole on the trailer. Now, the fifth hole on the trailer uh, means that you could only slide the axles up to the seventh hole. Uh, the hole, the air quotes, you are really close in front of me, dude. Can you? Oh, uh, my cruise control's out. All right. Look at you all shined up. Here we go. Who are you talking to? I'm not even on 19. Why are y'all talking to me? Um, <laughs> where's someone on this channel? Uh, <laughs> uh, someone stole my idea of using a different channel. Uh, <laughs> uh, what were we talking about? Oh, so the, the stop bar was in the fifth hole. So what you do for learning on prime trailers anyway, is uh, you learn which hole the front pin of the, of the slider tandems needs to be in to be legal for certain states. Now, uh, by having that stop bar jammed into the fifth hole and unable to be removed, I could only slide my axles up to the seventh hole. The seventh hole on a prime trailer is about 40 foot, three inches, <laughs> kingpin to rear axle. Now, those of you familiar with uh, trucking regulations in the state of California will know that that's uh, about three inches too far to the rear to be California legal. Most prime trailers, it, it honestly it was probably more like an inch and a half too far to the back. It was too far to the back though. Most prime trailers, the uh, well, all prime trailers, the sixth hole at the very least, like every prime trailer with the pin in the sixth hole, except for a couple that were manufactured in 2015. Um, can you just finish passing me already, guy? There's a school bus just sitting next to me. It pulled up next to me and it stopped going faster. What are you doing, guy? Eugene School District. You're listening? Are you gonna get in front of me and slow down? No, you're still doing 65 plus. I was only doing 62 when you stopped next to me. Um, so we couldn't move the axles far enough forward to be California legal, is what I'm getting at. Uh, so we had to take the trailer to the shop at the TA in, uh, in Coburg and get that stop bar cut out of the uh, of the slider bar so that we could move the axles further forward and become California legal. Because California uh, only allows 53-foot trailers if you can have the, the uh, kingpin to rear axle length of 40 feet or less. That's, that's the 53-foot trailer. 
regulation. 48 foot trailers, they don't care. <laughs> that's okay, that's not true. They do care a little bit with trailers under 48 feet. 48 foot trailers can go anywhere in the state on the national network. And then there are certain routes off of the national network that have kingpin to rear axle limits for all trucks, not just uh, not just 53 footers. So there, there are some, uh, what is that bus doing? He's right up on that truck. Jeez. Why is this school bus driving like this? What is going on? I am confused. Let's get in front of these slow cars. But we're not going to tailgate the people who are getting in front of me. Cool. We're not going to tailgate the pickup like that bus did. I would appreciate it if the pickup would go a little faster. There he goes. He's picking up speed now that he's in front of me. He got stuck behind uh, the Prius. <laughs> think. Um, but yeah, so we had to get the bar cut out. We got that done overnight. We, we crept in and out of the repair bay nice and slow so it didn't interrupt my sleeper break, which is not technically legal, but, you know, benefits of, uh, benefits of e-logs is if you drive slow enough, they don't know you moved. <laughs> it's horrible. It's horrible. But it, it didn't really matter. Like, we, we still got more than a 10-hour break in after getting the bar removed. So, for, for legal purposes, that's... I I, I could have... I should have logged that on duty, but I didn't want that to come into my 70. Because it's such a waste of time for logging on duty. But we still got a full sleep break after the bar was removed. We did that really quickly after we got there. They had me right in and out, so it was cool. Uh, and then, of course, we had to... I had, I had to sleep in this morning. <laughs> I say, like, that's some sort of... A, awful, awful, um, uh, some awful, uh, imposition on my time. I was forced to sleep in this morning because we're, we're due to, to deliver at 3 a.m. tonight, so I needed to sleep in, so I'm still awake at 3 a.m. <laughs> tonight, <laughs> and at 3 a.m. is still in my working day. <laughs> got the bar removed. We're California legal. We're heading down toward California. I've got to get fuel in about 100 miles and then uh, it's only 140 miles to the California border. So that will be fun. I will see you guys uh, maybe tomorrow morning somewhere around Gilroy. I don't know. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. Bye! Oh, uh, Elio Dare, social media, uh, like, subscribe, whatnot. <laughs> Instagram, Twitter. Uh, best places to get a hold of me. Comment below the videos. That's always great. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day. And I hope you guys enjoyed the scenery as much as I did. Also the rambling. I hope you guys enjoyed the rambling as much as I did because I definitely enjoyed the rambling. Not now, Apophis. I'm busy. I'm plugging my social media. <laughs> Bye!